Hi, welcome to Wise Guys. This video is another one on the algebraic fractions and it's um, a video of addition and subtraction of algebraic fractions. So here we have two algebraic fractions and you know that when you're dealing with fractions you need to have your lowest common denominator. We can see that these two, two denominators are quite different and what we need to do to get the lowest common denominator is just to multiply them together. And that might feel like, why are we multiplying them together? So let's just talk about that. So if you have two numbers like this, so 2 over 5 plus 3 over, um, oh, let's make it... Uh, yeah, let's make that 2 over 3. So 2 over 3. So if you look at this fraction, you, you I'm sure know that the denominator here is 15. And the way you'd get the 15 is take the 5 and multiply it by the 3. Okay? What would happen if this was 3x? You'd still do the same thing you take the 5 and multiply it by the 3x. So you have two completely different denominators. That's what you would do. It's just sort of the simple thing to do. So multiply these together. So that's what we would do here. Two completely different. They look like they're the same, but here we have multiplication and here we have addition. So we, all we're going to do is multiply those denominators together. So Let's just rewrite this so we have x over 4b and then we're adding it to 2 over 4 plus b. So now we're saying the denominator has to be 4b times 4 plus b so then we just multiply it by 4 plus b. But if you multiply in the denominator by 4 plus b, you must multiply in the numerator by 4 plus b. And in this denominator, we have to multiply the 4 plus b times 4b. But if you multiply in the denominator by 4b, you must multiply in the numerator by 4b. So now our denominator we have our denominator and I'm not going to be multiply or I'm not going to bother multiplying through there. So in the denominator we have 4b times 4 plus b. And in the numerator here we have 4x plus bx. And it's added to 4b times 4 plus b and in the numerator here we have 8b. Now what we do is we just make the denominator the same. So one whole denominator and I'm going to leave it factored like this. So we have 4b times 4 plus b and on the top I'm going to put the 8b first, so we have 8b plus 4x plus bx. We can't combine any of these here, so this, and we can't reduce anything, so this, this one is finished. Okay. All right, next question. So again, we have two completely different denominators. So what we do then to get our lowest common denominator is just multiply those two denominators together. So the 6s is over t minus 1. And then we're adding it to the 5a, which is over, oh sorry, t minus 2. And we're adding it to the 5a, which is over t plus 1. Now, we're going to just multiply the denominators together. Or, yeah, so we're going to multiply this one times t plus 1. 
We multiply in the, in the denominator by t plus 1. We must multiply in the numerator by t plus 1. This denominator we're multiplying by t minus 2. So we have to multiply the numerator by t minus 2. So now we can multiply through here, but let's make the denominator all the same. So we have t, I'm going to just put the 1 in front, so t plus 1 times t minus 2. And up here we have 6st, so 6s is multiplied by the t. And then 6s times the 1, so plus 6s. And then we would add it to what's happening here. So 5at minus 10a. Okay. So now um, I don't see anything that can be added. Make sure this is correct. Yeah, 5at minus 10a. We can leave this denominator the way it is. There's no point in multiplying it through. It's not going to be helpful. And we can't combine any terms here, so this can just stay the way it is. All right, last one. So now we sort of stop and take a look at this and notice there's something similar about them. This this uh, piece here is factorable. So that's the first thing you do is factor it. So let's leave the first one alone. So 9, we have 3x minus 2 added to 3a. You can see that we can take a 2 out of both these terms. So we pull out a 2 and we're left with 3x minus 4 minus 2. All right. So now 3x minus 2, 3x minus 2. So we have part of our denominator in both of these. All right. So then we can see that all we need to do here is multiply the 3x minus 2 on this side by 2. And that will give both, both terms here the same denominator. So we multiply here by 2. But if we multiply this denominator by 2, we must multiply this numerator by 2. So now on the top here, we have 18 plus, short, sorry, plus 3a divided by 2 times 3x minus 2. And the only thing that would be different here is typically the, the term that has the variable in it would be first. So then we'd have 3a plus 18 divided by 2 times 3x minus 2. And you sort of stop and ask yourself if there's anything factorable, anything we can do. You can see that there's a 3 in both of these terms, but I there's no real point. If it was if it was a 2 that we could pull out, that would be different. But at this point, this looks good enough. Okay? Alright. So, and that has, uh, that video has been brought to you by Wise Guys. I hope you have a super day. Take care.